good evening. Um, today we'll just look at uh, Sting design verification tool and how it was developed as a um, an approach. The, what the approach was taken to to address the very different kinds of problems that RISC V uh, brings about in terms of verification. So. Uh, just to give a brief introduction, we are uh, a company based in Bangalore and we've been developing uh, RISC-V uh, SOC and CPU verification products over the last seven years and um, Sting is uh, one of the advanced uh, RISC-V verification tool that we have uh, designed. It's a flagship product and the uh, its contents can be seen on, on the image. It's uh, basically user-defined inputs. Uh, some we have a random test generator, a stimulus uh, generator, and also uh, directed tests uh, that uh, combine, get together, and combine as a Sting .elf that can be run on um, across the design lifecycle from simulation, emulation uh, to post silicon as well. So that's who we are. Um, so what defines a good RISC V verification tool? Uh, some of the challenges that is associated with uh, doing this. We'll just go through this uh, in this presentation, in this talk. Um, one of the main challenges is that uh, RISC-V mm -hmm. is highly config configurable. There's got a lot of extensions that are happening, a lot, lot of them being ratified, a lot of them being changed, a um, lot of versions coming out. And so your tool has to be able to support all of these uh, versions and uh, be up to date. And so. While designing the tool, we had uh, kept these attributes in mind and we have taken steps uh, to be flexible enough uh, and extensible enough. So that is one of our uh, unique uh, attributes that we have and we'll go over that. Another thing is that RISC-V supports and the reason why everybody's interested in RISC-V is custom extensions where you can add your secret sauce and make the best core, right? And so. Uh, this is also important while uh, designing a verification tool to have the ability to extend, uh, to cover custom extensions and implementation specific behavior. Another thing that we need to uh, keep in mind is that uh, you need to have ability to insert sequences or uh, chicken bits that uh, your RTL or DOT supports and uh, the verification tool needs to be agnostic or friendly to address all those kind of uh, areas. Uh, and so for this, we have uh, a unique uh, pro language framework. It's called configurations, Sting configurations. It's an extension of a JSON-like format, but uh, it can be used to do conditional checking. And so on, on the screenshot, we can see that uh, the, there's a configuration dictionary called as RV params, uh, which defines how your DOT should look like, like what all extensions it supports. Uh, what versions of the extension does it support right now? And there's an import hierarchy, which is the files on the left, uh, uh, on the right side for me, um, that you can override. So, say you, you are a CPU vendor and you have different profiles of CPUs, so you can override these configuration files according to your own stimulus. But when you have a really large number of configurations, it becomes tedious to maintain uh, different input sources. So we've created another utility called Sting Configuration Creator, SCC as we call it, uh, which derives from a single input configuration source or a specification source, which could be a JSON format or any other format that you use to generate your cores, your RTL or your model. Uh, so Sting tests can also be generated using from the same source. And so um, using that, we generate uh, different uh, parameters like your DUT specification, your board configuration, like what, where's your RAM, what, where your drivers located, uh, what are the test properties associated that you need to have, and uh, all of these can be generated using the Sting configuration creator tool. Uh, this helps in reducing um, manual effort and also it improves verification efficiency and also makes it future proof, like you want to scale, uh, you want to add more designs to your, uh, con uh, in, in, in your scope, then this tool helps you like easily scale in that sense. Um, regarding extensible uh, extensibility that I talked about earlier, we have got uh, we have implemented weak functions in our boot sequence in our test generator, like between test start and test end, where you want to randomize certain things. 
certain number of times, not for all the cycles, but only for certain cycles. So we've got uh, hooks placed in the design of the tool uh, that can be used um, to achieve these custom things. Like you have interrupt handlers or you have NMI handlers. So you can install your custom handlers uh, with as part of the tool and uh, achieve verification through that. Another thing that we have kept in mind while uh, being extensible is we have a programming framework of our own, which is called a snippet programming framework. It's unique in the sense that it's designed for design verification. Uh, we have a uh, lot of constructs that it supports, like a uh, lot of things for, uh, for randomization of the inputs. Uh, so I'll show you an example in the next slide, but it's primarily divided into certain sections, init, run, and check. And you have a resource section where you can declare uh, memories or you can declare registers. And these can be agnostic, like the tool does the randomization for you. So if you have a directed sequence, but you want a good amount of randomization, say you want memories coming from different ports in when you run multiple iterations of the test, you can just declare a memory uh, and a label corresponding to that memory in your resource block. And the tool does the randomization for you from the all available memory in the board configuration. So this is an example. Uh, the, the first tab on the left side is a snippet. And you can see a resource block where you have defined some register and probably a memory. Uh, so this gets assigned randomly um, by the tool. And later on, you can use it to uh, declare an instruction sequence that needs to be executed on a particular core. So this example contains a three core uh, system. Uh, and in this example, we can see that there's a CPU on star x and there's a CPU star construct. There's two constructs that are available uh, that are seen in this, which means that x is a random CPU in the three core uh, system. And CPU star means that all of these instructions sub subsequent to that gets rendered on all the three CPUs. So this kind of uh, uh, approach has helped uh, in improve, I mean, writing test sequences in a directed fashion, but giving a lot of randomization uh, and thus improving coverage uh, overall. So as part of uh, using this framework, we have, we've had cache colliders, uh, we've got register sweeping, we've got branch harassing workloads that we have developed in-house. And this can also be used to, uh, you know, uh, attack custom extensions and custom instructions as well. As, as in, you can use the framework to uh, approach your custom extensions, custom instructions, and uh, implement that as well. Another thing that we have done is we've ported uh, the RIS-5 RVWMO litmus test into this framework. So we've covered that, um, which uh, gets integrated with this thing's native stimulus. Um, and we, are, we have, we have keep keeping on adding a lot of uh, stimulus along with the existing tests that we have. Um, so architectural tests, are they good enough? We have to, uh, before signing off, we have to verify the microarchitectural and make sure they are bug free. And so we need to have capability uh, of that while designing a verification tool. So we have a test plan based approach for that. We have uh, mapped uh, a lot of our uh, all of our stimulus to various items in the test plan, which is derived from the specification, primarily the RISC-5 specification for each uh, extension. And uh, we've got it mapped as part of the test plan. And every configuration that you run will be a of a particular flavor. But every time you run it, it will have a different random sequence to it. So it attacks the problem, but it randomizes each time you run uh, a configuration. So the different methodologies that we have kept in mind uh, while designing the verification tool is constrained random, where you have a particular set of stimulus and a particular constraints along with it uh, to uh, verify a stream of instructions. Another thing that we have, uh, we're developing is dynamic random, where uh, you generate an instruction and then simulate it and then generate the next instruction and then simulate it so that you generate uh, valid sequences of instructions, but you know that you're generating a right uh, thing, uh, which is dynamic in nature. Uh, but there's a disadvantage to this that it's 
pretty slow to generate this kind of an instruction sequence where you have to simulate each instruction. Another thing is directed testing which I mentioned about uh, as part of the snippets. So we achieve directed testing using snippets uh, to target particular scenarios. So we have got examples of uh, doing page faults or uh, PMP faults using these directed uh, snippet framework. Another thing is the graph based mechanism. So say you have test operations or sequences that you want to uh, target, say you want to plant certain page faults so as in like you can shape your test, you want to do certain amount of things certain number of times and then do maybe stress your cache for a certain amount of time and then do again page faults for a certain amount of time. So the ability to uh, shape your test is uh, available in Sting using this graph based mechanism. Another type of workloads that we have is the real world scenarios where we have um, memory copy, auto vectorization, pointer chasing, all of these are part and in, integrated into the existing uh, Sting stimulus framework. Another thing while uh, we need to keep in mind while designing a robust uh, verification design tool is that um, we need to make sure that it has good checking mechanisms. So one of uh, we've got four primarily four mechanisms that is uh, signature based mechanism, directed test, a model reference checking mechanism and a multi pass mechanism. So because of the lack of time I will just go quickly. Uh, multi pass is where you run an image with different archi initial architectural states and then you compare the results of those two states at, at each point of time and see if there is a uh, difference in the memory signatures. A model reference mechanism is where you run the Sting's image on a model first and then generate uh, a checkpoint memory and then you run it on your DUT and then compare it with the DUT results. A signature based mechanism is what we have been developing recently and uh, um, where you get the instruction by instruction data dumped at the end of test generation and this can be integrated with the test bench and you can do a checking of the architectural states at every instruction level. Uh, another thing that, that we need to keep in mind while uh, doing the stimulus is porting it across the design life cycle from simulation to FPGA to post silicon. So uh, our tool has different modes of execution mechanisms where you want to generate your stimulus or you want to generate your test on uh, faster platforms like your x86 machine when you are running simulations but when you are running it on post silicon you probably do the generation online. So we have got mechanisms uh, such that it is portable across um, the different modes of execution. I am sorry that I have to go a little bit fast but yeah. So we have uh, this multi-test execution where uh, we, we can generate large number of tests like uh, for FPG and emulation platforms you can generate maybe depending upon your memory available thousands or hundreds of tests in a single elf and then run it and do the verification at in, in a single run itself. Um, we are working on uh, developing Sting for SOC and we already have certain elements of SOC in place in, in Sting verification suite uh, like the interrupt controllers, the DMA, uh, the caches. Uh, and it is being extended uh, as we progress. Um, yeah, so as a summary, um, we need to keep a lot of things in mind while generating uh, a design verification tool being from scalability to ease of use uh, to the different configurations that we have in available and so all of these have been kept in mind while we have designed this tool. Uh, yeah, so that it's easier for uh, it easier for the verification engineer engineers and it also improves verification efficiency and throughput. Thank you. Uh, if you'd like to get a demo, we're right there. Please stop by and feel free to talk to us. Thank you.